welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little bit of an update video. Um, remember those little philodendron basil cuttings we got started in sphagnum moss a couple weeks back? Um, so it's been about exactly two and a half weeks and I just want to show you progress on these little guys. Um, let's see. So I kind of noticed growth you know, I've always been, every day, I kind of peeked in here and to see what was going on. But on the second day, I definitely already started to see new growth in um, from the nodes. So this method is awesome. I left this, um, I left this little guy on an east-facing window um, in this in this Ziploc bag, kind of as like a, acted like a greenhouse, and um, I kind of just left it alone. I've only sprayed it maybe once to re-moisten it and. That's all it needed. I, I left on vacation for 10 days, kind of left, set it and forget it, and it's doing awesome. You have to check this out too. I don't know if you can see, but they're already growing right through the sphagnum moss. So there's a lot going on. The roots are growing very well, and I want to maybe get these into some soil before they get too large. So from my research, if you let your uh, roots grow too long, they have a harder time adjusting to new medium, like from moving from transferring from one medium to another. So we want to get them in, I think right about now. Um, so yeah, I have in here philodendron Brazil cuttings, and I also I also scored some philodendron Rio Rio cuttings as well, uh, philodendron silver stripe. So they're really similar looking, but. They're also very different, very different plants, but they're doing well. I'm really excited. Oops, let's see. So I want to be really gentle and try to do no damage, but there's so much growth. They've grown right into the moss there. I love this method. I'm going to continue with this um, until I experiment with other methods and see what works best for me. But I really like this. I like this sphagnum moss propagation, propagating method. Um, I think I have a really good spot in my, it's really weird. Both of my bathrooms in this house have probably the best lighting in the whole house. So I think it's a great place to uh, propagate as well. It's an east facing side, so it stays nice warm and bright all day so that's my spot I figured it out so I'm gonna gently gently separate everything from the moss as much as I can and then my next step is going to be moving them into soil and this next step is always kind of I don't know. I'm always nervous. I'm always nervous when it comes to my plants. Um, but it's you know, you, transferring your uh, your cuttings to soil is not always a hundred percent success rate, or it's not a hundred percent success rate. So it's always you know stressful not knowing if your plants are going to make it or not because you spent so much time with them, growing them, right? So you don't want to lose them. So lots of cuttings here. We've pretty much made a whole new plant out of one strand. One strand that was on the verge of dying. So, so we're doing awesome things here. So all these are all these to my left are my philodendron. Brazil cuttings, and then to my right are my reels. And I'm gonna show you a close up just so you could see a difference between them. They're so similar looking, but once you see them up close, or you know, once you notice their differences, you can totally tell the difference. <laughs> so these are the Brazil cuttings here. I got super lucky and got an awesome deal on a couple cuttings um, and they grew. 
I threw these guys in a week after I got the Brazil cutting started, so they've actually, you know, grown just as much. I'm very lucky they rooted quickly. So here are the two cuttings. This one to the right is the Philodendron Brazil, and this one to the left is the Philodendron Rio, and they are very, very similar looking, but if you look at the Philodendron Rio, it's got a little bit more of like a silvery, creamy stripe to it versus the Brazil, which is more of like just a, like a lime, lime green. So the Rio is a little more heart shaped and a little more pointy, but they all both look very similar. But I just wanted to point that out in case y'all didn't know. Awesome. So next I'm going to move my cuttings into a nursery pot. So I'm just trying to carefully separate as much of the moss from the roots because the roots have grown right, right into it. I think a little bit moss left over is okay, but you want to try to just separate as much as possible, as carefully as possible. to separate as much as I can. Like I said, a little bit of moss left on the roots should be okay. Some of them, it's funny to see like all of them come from the same, same cutting, but they've all kind of grown at the different rates. Like they're all their own, their own plant now. I have a little house plant potting mix I like to use here. Um, it's a mixture of, I'd say a 50% mixture of organic soil potting, organic potting soil with a little bit of cactus oil mixed in. So I'd say 50% that and then 50% um, 50 mixture of perlite and orchid bark. So it's like half soil and half aeration properties. They, they ensure proper air aeration and drainage for our plants. And now I'm gonna, you know, arrange them, arrange each cutting into the pot. So, yeah, I, you know, recently discovered, you know, after I started collecting plants and repotting them and saving them for root rot and whatnot, but from pulling them out of their pots, they're all little cuttings put into one pot to make it look like a big full plant, right? So that's something I just recently learned from, you know, just having plants and messing with them and digging through the soil. But yeah, your beautiful full plants that you buy from the nursery are just a bunch of little cuttings put into one pot. So that's kind of what I'm doing it here. Once we kind of get them placed and arranged to our liking, we're gonna fill up the rest of the pot with our soil. So there's a little base down there about a third of the way up of our pot. And then I'm just gonna gently fill it up with our potting mix. Give it a little shake and tap to let things settle in. want to guide all of our new roots down into the soil and then once we have enough soil in here we want to water this guy right away because he's coming from a really damp and humid moist environment to a new medium and it's soil and it's pretty dry so we need to get him some water right away we don't want to wait too long and we don't want our cuttings to go through any type of shock. 
which happens and it's okay. They'll just need time to resettle in to their new homes. So. Cute, right? All right, give a little tap and let's water this guy really quick. So I wanna show you how I'm gonna water him. Place him in a little tray. I'm going to give a slow watering, evenly distribute the water until our soil is fully saturated. You're going to want to see drainage. It's probably going to be pretty quick if your soil is pretty dry and pretty airy. It's not going to hold too much water. So sometimes, especially because my soil comes from outside, I water it and kind of let it sit let it sit in this pool of water for, I don't know, maybe five to 10 minutes, depending on how dry it is. Um, just make sure to not forget to leave them in the puddle of water because I've done this plenty of times. I've learned now that I should always set an alarm because you'll easily forget your plants in the water, in its tray and It'll soak up too much water and that will lead to root rot and that's everyone's worst enemy, right? Root rot. So that's something we wanna avoid. So I'm gonna let this guy sit in here for like three to five minutes since it's kind of a small pot. Make sure our, our soil soaks up some water properly. Then another thing I wanna do, especially because he's a cutting, maybe use some of the soil that we propagated him in if it's nice, actually. I'm going to use some freshly soaked sphagnum moss. This moss has been soaking in filtered water for, I don't know, half a day now. So it's nice and saturated. I'm going to squeeze out excess water and then place a light layer over our cuttings that we just moved to soil. This is helpful. It keeps, it helps, it helps with humidity, which cuttings and most plants like, and it's going to retain moisture in your soil so you won't have to water as frequently, especially here in Las Vegas is really dry, so soil does dry out fairly quickly, and we want to make sure the soil stays pretty moist, pretty damp because there are cuttings and they're adjusting to their new homes. You just want to make sure they're comfortable. Keep them nice and warm and humid in there. So, there we go. All done. And, all right. Shake out any excess water and look. So we have a whole new plant out of one little strand from a mommy plant, right? So that is so cool. Look how cute. I think she's gonna adjust just fine. I'm gonna keep her kind of in the same place. Sometimes people will use, reuse the um, plastic bag to keep humidity, help humidity, help her stay moist and help those roots kind of grow into their new home, into the new soil. So she is so cute. I'm happy with how she turned out. And I'm so proud that I've grown a completely new plant out of one plant. That's awesome, right? That's so cool. So now our cuttings are a completely new plant. And now we can watch her grow. Alright guys, well thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit with me and come back real soon for more plant adventures. Bye! <laughs>